Welcome to Review Every Ship by CitizenCon 2024. The point is to give an update on every ship since some haven't had a video made about them in years. We'll go in depth, but we won't repeat everything on the RSI website. We will link to multiple sources of information, either in the description or in the comments. We have reached the Anvil Aerospace brand. We continue our series with the Anvil Carrick, and it has zero variants, unless you include the expedition but as a note we don't include variants if all they offer is a different livery or color scheme for the price the carrick as of 3.22 is 650 standalone 500 war bond and was 350 at concept this ship is only available during limited sales the anvil carrick features reinforced fuel tanks for long duration flight and advanced jump drive and a dedicated computer core for jump charting operations originally a military exclusive the carrick is now available for civilian use Onboard accommodation includes crew medical and repair facilities and a mapping oriented sensor suite. This is the standard bearer for explorers. Rose, and we're going, we don't need Rose. For measurements, the Carrick has a length of 126.5 meters, a beam of 76.5, and a height of 30 meters. And it is a large ship. Its minimum crew is four and its maximum crew is six. It can carry 456 SCU. That's a lot. Oh, that's a lot of potatoes. That's the fifth best cargo capacity in the game as of 3.22. The Carrick has a top SCM speed of 208, which is way above average, and a max speed of 1236, which is also way above average. In a straight line, this ship is faster than a lot of light fighters. For maneuverability, it's a different story. It has way below average maneuverability, but for the large size class, it's top three. For weapons, the Carrick has one size five remote turret and three size five man turret. Just remember, these only carry size four at the moment until the weapon system is online. They're basically changing it where gimbals are no longer going to be degraded to where you can only put a size four gimbal on a size five weapon. So I'm doing this review as though it has one size five remote turret and three size five man turrets because that system is supposed to be coming online soon. For ship parts, the Carrick has two large radars, three medium computers, one large power plant, two large coolers, two large shield generators, two large fuel intakes, two large fuel tanks, one large quantum drive, one large jump module, and two large quantum fuel tanks. The hull HP for the Carrick is 93,000, which is average overall, hitting top 20 though. And for its large class, it's way above average. It is a top five as of 3.22, as is expected with one of the three largest ships in game as of 3.22. The shields on the Carrick are Barbican shields. These are quadrant type shields. The HP is 110,000 and regen rate is about 484 HP per second. The quantum stats for the Carrick are speeds of about 59, which equates to it taking about three minutes to go 10 mega kilometers and maxes out at about 1,139 mega kilometers, which is not very fast, but it goes very far. The claim time for the Carrick is about seven minutes, expedited is about two minutes at 3,400 credits. For amenities, the Carrick has a tier two medical bed and full medical bay repair drones and a small repair bay, a mapping oriented sensor suite, a dedicated computer core room, cockpit blast cover armor, captain's quarters, a full cartography deck, a radar table, a retractable antenna, and of course, four repair drones and two drone operator stations. The Carrick also has a small snub hanger and an included C8 or C8X, depending on whether you got the regular or the Expedition. It also comes with an Ursa Rover in a dedicated vehicle bay that doesn't take up cargo space. And lastly, the ship has three swappable modules under its belly. The default modules are the cargo modules, which give it that 456 SCU. Now it's time to rate this ship, a rating I rate from one to 10. My one is only buy if you have a unique reason that is specific to you or because you like the looks of the ship. My 10 is basically if you have the money, this ship is almost guaranteed to be useful to you in the game. A one doesn't mean the ship is useless or ugly, and a 10 doesn't mean that the ship is perfect. Just remember, this is just our rating. Please give us yours in the comments down below. And if it's not close to ours, then that's okay. Or maybe not. So why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? My rating for this ship overall is a, wait, I have to do two here, an eight.
and an eye. I know, crazy, right? But strap in, this requires a lot of explanation. The Carrick has to have two scores because of the massive price difference you could have got this ship at. If you purchase this ship for less than $351, it is a nine, easy. This ship is worth way more than that, and you, my friend, got a heck of a deal. If you paid anything more than that, the ship is an eight because you most likely paid exactly what the ship is worth. Don't worry, you can continue playing the CCU game and potentially get one on the cheap, so keep trying. Now that we've got price out of the way, the real attraction to this ship is easy to see. It is a jack of all trades ship wrapped in an exploration package. It can repair, do medical, do heavy freight cargo, chart jump points better than anything, and of course it can do exploration. If that isn't enough for you, the ship also has three separate modular bays that you can mix and match. We don't know what all the modular bays will consist of, but you can bet they will all be useful. Like I said, jack of all trades. One thing that I absolutely love about the Anvil Carrick is that it does the jack of all trades thing but still remains a master of exploration. The cartography table, radar table, jump point charting ability, and expanded sensor suite means the ship can go out and detect just about anything you put in front of it. It is the premier radar finder and jump point charting ship. No other ship will do that better. Not even close. I think that's the intended purpose for this ship. You figure out what you want to detect or chart, you equip the ship correctly for the task you're setting out to do, and then you have enough fuel to get you there, maintain you while you do the charting, detection job, and enough to grab a lot of specimens and loot to bring back. Then you come back, use or sell that data you collected, use or sell those specimens and loot you collected, then you rinse and repeat. This is an absolutely incredible ship. Now for the part that nobody wants to hear, it's flaws. And to be fair, it seems like most of these are intentional design choices rather than flaws to balance a ship that was almost too awesome. The weapons, no pilot weapons, that hampers the ship's usability with the skeleton crew. Also right now, having three size four man turrets makes no sense on an exploration ship. They should all be remote turrets. This ship has the best in-game sensors available. It just makes sense for those to be remote turrets. And for sure, one of them should slave to the pilot when it's not being used, just one. Now that size degradation for gimbals is going away. Those, those turrets will be able to slot size five weapons and that will be an improvement, but it still won't make those turrets remote as they should be. Then let's talk about the lack of missiles. It has not one, not two, but three modular bays, yet none of those carry missiles? Not even some size two missiles? Maybe a missile bay is planned in the future, but I just think that giving the pilot at least one gun or just having them operate missiles would push this up a point all by itself. So basically, if you own a Carrick and it's not fully crewed, it's a very fast ship in a straight line and is designed to run, not stay and fight. It even has armor which allows you to escape mostly unscathed. So at least until the gimbal degradation is gone, you should run from anything that has missiles or size four and above weapons. You're almost guaranteed to get away. Now let's talk ship parts. I can't, for the life of me, understand why the Carrick doesn't have a capital power plant, or at least two large power plants. This thing has two or three of almost every part it can carry. How is one large power plant going to handle all of that? Newsflash, it won't. You won't be able to do all of those things at once. You will have to choose a role and power that particular role. And that could be true for a lot of different ships, not just the Carrick. But you have to do this or else use up all your batteries to do them all at once. But once those batteries run out, so does your ability to do all of those things. I think some folks look at all of its capability and think it's a do everything ship and they're not always off base. It's just, you can't do all those things at the same time. Now let's talk defense. This ship is set to come with armor, so that may help it a lot, but we still don't know the details of what armor will consist of yet, so we will just have to go based on hull HP and shield HP for now. I'll say that again. We don't know what armor will consist of yet. For now, all we have to go on is hull HP and shield HP. The balance here is that this ship is meant to run. It has two large shield generators and 93,000 hull HP to do that with. I argue the hull HP should at least be 116,000 because right now, a tiny little Terrapin has more hull HP than the massive Carrick. So it is under armored as far as hull HP. If not that, then it should at least come with a class A civilian large shield rather than class B. We'll see if that remains true once Maelstrom and armor come online. As far as multi-role gameplay, this ship is excellent for that. Just not yet because exploration gameplay isn't really in the game yet. It also isn't great for flying in atmosphere. It's basically a brick in Atmo. 
We wouldn't use it to do bunker missions or basic cave diving just yet. For the same reason, although it carries 456 SCU, it's not a great cargo ship unless you keep it in space. But if you go to ground, the cargo on the Carrick is in a weird place, so it takes a long time to load and unload it manually. However, it is still excellent if you're trading in commodities that are auto-loaded and unloaded, where all you have to do is go to a kiosk. However, I'm not sure how long that will last because we do have loading and unloading coming to the game very soon. Lastly, let's talk about the repair room and repair drones. This thing basically has a Vulcan in it, minus the ability to refuel ships. That is incredible. Just remember, all of these things are massive drains on that large power plant. Still, being able to repair your own ship along with others along the way is great. I can imagine keeping this ship in the rear as a command and control ship, holding supplies for the fleet, supporting repair for damaged ships, scanning potential threats from far out, and allowing captains and commanders to have large meetings to plan missions before they head out in their respective ships. Just make sure you properly crew this ship. I would say its crew requirements are very accurate. That's not a point against it so much as a minimum crew of four holds it back from a point above where it is. CIG, slave one of those turrets to pilot and give this ship what it deserves or just give it some missiles. As an explorer, I do think the fact that it can't refuel itself is a limitation. It's not a big one, but it is a limitation. At some point, it will have a limit that it reaches in charted space or uncharted, where it has to return to the nearest base to refuel. I think it could stand to have a capital fuel tank and capital quantum fuel tank so that distance is even further because two large fuel tanks and two quantum fuel tanks is great but it's not as maximized as it could be considering it has to go out and come back. Sure, you can pair it with a Starfarer but you can pair anything with a Starfarer so that's not much of an argument for the Carrick so much as a reason for everyone to get a Starfarer in their fleet. Also, remember the Starfarer, at least as of 3.22 January 9th, 2024, is not capable of mining Quantanium. So you would also need to bring a Prospector with every Starfarer. Once Modularity comes online and we know which ones are gonna fit in the Carrick and we confirm that, we can revisit this ship because my guess is it will get an easy point bump. Right now, with what we know and can confirm, you can't go wrong with buying this ship. Unless you're focused on combat or bounty hunting, you will find a use for this ship. Even at $650, this ship is still a great value. But at $350 or less, it becomes to me the best value ship in the game. If you're building a fleet, there is almost always a way to use this ship. The only people that don't need it, people who have a large exploration ship such as a 600i or a constellation Aquila, people who are purely focused on combat or bounty hunting, people who don't like large ships, and people who already have their repair and medical covered by other ships in their fleet. If you don't fit into that category, get it. It's one for the hangar, for sure. I guarantee it. That being said, if you really want any ship, go buy it regardless of your needs. We won't stop you. Or even better, all ships can be earned in game. These are just our ratings. Open that wallet. And if you own a Carrick and need to get your stress out in these comments because of my rating, it's okay. This is a safe space. Except it's not because it's the internet. But still leave that angry comment we can handle it all right that is it for this one thanks for spending your time with us peace